I think people are going to be surprised and will continue to be surprised by how fast Bitcoin spreads. There's, first of all, I've been surprised through every technology I've seen mature rapidly. Every time I've seen a kind of earth-shattering, world-changing technology, um, and that started with my first computer, my first PC, my first modem, first internet connection, first website, and, and then Linux, and then Bitcoin. To me, those were a series of six epiphanies, and every time I had this, oh, this is going to be amazing moment, and then I thought it's going to take decades. And the biggest mistake I made every time was underestimating how fast a useful technology spreads. I didn't expect computers to spread this fast. I didn't expect the internet to spread this fast. I didn't expect Linux to spread this fast. Every time I was surprised, not by how broad it was, but by how fast the technology accelerated once it reached the level of awareness and consciousness. We have already crossed the tipping point for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is working at a scale no one imagined possible. It is now a global transnational currency. At its very basic, it is the most useful form of money uh, for the internet invented. It's safe, it's fast, uh, and it's cheap. It's transnational, it doesn't give a shit about borders, it just moves. And that creates enormous financial velocity and flexibility. I think while in the developing world it's going to have the most uh, earth-shattering impact and implications, because it simultaneously takes money out of the hands of some of the most corrupt governments in the world and puts it in the hands of the people. And at the same time, it connects everybody in one global currency that, uh, that they can use for trade with the rest of the world. It's going to have the biggest impact there, but that's not where it's going to go fastest. I think you're going to be surprised at how fast it's going to accelerate, even in the developing world. Because the developing world is also much bigger than we realize here. The U.S. is five percent of the world population, and the U.S. has the world reserve currency, and that's a position one currency has. There's 193 other currencies. Of those, probably a hundred are worth nothing. You know, they're dirt, and they are incredibly corrupt and very difficult to trade, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's another hundred in between that are these countries that are semi-developed or developed enough in terms of infrastructure, literacy, numeracy, uh, technology capability, but at the same time have really difficult currency situations and very bad governments. I'll give you just a few examples. Um, Buenos Aires, Argentina. I visited there in November of uh, 2013. This is a country that in the last 15 years has had two major currency crises, and it is on the precipice of a major bond default that will completely trash their currency for the third time. And in that country, they have lost everything for an entire generation, now almost three times. Every single time that happens, the government is able to shut the shutters, if you like, cordon off the country from a currency perspective, and take the entire population of Argentina hostage, and force them to continue to use a currency even as it turns to dust in their hands. What happens when they no longer have the ability to do that? So Argentina is one currency crisis away from a mass Bitcoin adoption event. And it's not going to be adopted by 100% of the population. It's going to be adopted by maybe 1% of the population. But 1% of the population of Argentina is going to bring maybe $2 billion into the economy. And is going to create a high enough density of users of Bitcoin in places like Buenos Aires that is going to change that economy dramatically. And then people look at that and they copy that example. Next time Cyprus happens, uh, where the government goes in and confiscates money from people's bank accounts, they're going to opt out from that system. And this is going to continue happening in small places all around the world. So I think we're all going to be surprised by how fast Bitcoin takes off. In the developed world, it's going to take off primarily for shopping and e-commerce and um, you know, getting around difficult forms of uh, finance and uh, capital flows. But there's also this vast in-between between where we are 
the word Zimbabwe is, for example. And there's a hundred currencies in there that could benefit from Bitcoin. I think we're going to be surprised. Again, the big difference, the internet took 15 years to bloom into its full mainstream adoption. Um, and it's still accelerating, by the way. And, but those 15 years also involved putting down infrastructure, copper wires, fiber optics, data centers, um, cell phone infrastructure, and modems, PCs that were barely ahead of that game and spreading at the same time. With Bitcoin, all you need to do is download an app. That's the infrastructure. We don't need to lay any cables. We already got them. So not only is it going to spread much faster than the internet, it's actually going to accelerate the spread of the internet itself. Because now an internet device has an added layer of utility being a bank. And that layer of utility is self-financing, which means it will pay for the internet connection. And that changes quite a few things on the internet too, when you can fund infrastructure.